discussions often focus on who gets what and who pays what. However, what effect do taxes have on behavior? Is taxation a neat accounting activity that moves funds from the private sector to the public sector, or are there secondary effects? With me today is David Seymour from the Frontier Center for Public Policy. So David, what did Henry Hazlitt mean when he called this chapter, Taxes Discourage Production? Uh, well, the point he was trying to make is that tax collection changes the behavior uh, of whoever is targeted by the tax. Now, the revenue generated can be used for government spending, certainly, uh, but the actual collection process and makes people veer away from whatever activity uh, the tax is levied upon. Um, and you can't fully understand tax by saying it's a transfer of money from one part of the economy uh, to another. The effects are, on behavior are actually important too. What exactly do you mean by behavioral changes? Well, politicians understand the effects on, of tax on behavior very well. For example, you know, there are taxes on cigarettes because people believe that uh, the additional expense will cause people to stop smoking or at least smoke less. And similarly, uh, on the subject of climate change, there's a lot of talk around the world uh, about taxing carbon emissions in order to make people veer away from uh, carbon emitting activities. Um, you should expect, if you believe that, then you should expect the same effects uh, to occur when you tax pr productive behavior. That may be true, but if taxes are the price we pay for a civilized society, doesn't it make this discussion interesting but ultimately irrelevant? Well, to some extent, yes, but there's still the question of how much tax and therefore how much discouragement. Uh, that They're actually linked. One thing many people don't realize is that when Justice uh, Oliver Wendell Holmes Jr. said that taxes are the price we pay for a civilized society, um, total taxes equaled only about 5 or 10 percent of the economy. And today it's more like 40 percent on both sides of the border. Why do higher rates discourage production? Well, it's particularly important when risk is involved. Uh, in Saskatchewan, businesses pay 30 percent uh, tax on their profits. Uh, but profits, of course, are not actually guaranteed. If your business venture succeeds, then you, know, you keep 70% of those profits after you pay 30% in tax. But if your business venture fails, then you lose 100% of your investment. It's all gone. Uh, of course, there are many risks that are worth taking, even with a 30% tax on profits. But there are fewer and fewer uh, as the tax rate increases. If the tax rate were 40%, say, then you risk losing 100% if your business deal goes wrong to potentially keep 60%. Eventually, if you have 100% tax, uh, then being an entrepreneur means you risk losing 100% uh, to tax uh, to potentially keep nothing uh, if your business venture fails, so you get nothing either way. You're assuming that risk is a good thing. Well, yeah, I mean, risk is essential because risk is part of experimentation. For example, uh, there's a great Canadian company, Research in Motion, um, and they had the idea that they would make cell phones where people can send email. Uh, when they started that idea in the mid-90s, it was, was way out. Um, you know, the BlackBerry could have been a huge failure. Lots of things have been, laser discs, segways, etc. Um, but as it happens, the BlackBerry's been a massive success, and now people think they're addicted to them. Um, so discouraging risk ultimately means discouraging innovation. What about taxes on income? For most people, going to work is not really a risk. Uh, well, true, but, but there is some risk. Uh, for example, investing in a qualification in the hope of a higher income is a bit of a risk. It doesn't always work out. Uh, but taxes also affect effort the same way that they affect risk. So if you work, you pay a percentage of your income in tax. Um, but if you don't work, you get 100% of your leisure time. Uh, so like risk, the higher the tax rate, the less likely people are to work in the legitimate economy. Are you trying to say that taxes promote the black market? Well, that's a strong way to put it. But say you have a plumber who needs uh, some painting done and a painter who needs some plumbing done. Now, the most efficient way for all of this to work uh, is if the painter does the plumber's painting and the plumber does the painter's plumbing. The problem is that if they do that, they'll both be taxed because they'll both be working for someone else. And the higher the tax rate is, the more likely that they won't do that. Instead, they'll try to do the job themselves. Now, if they try to do the job themselves, uh, then th in that case, they end up with less spare time to produce other things, uh, and they'll probably do poorer work. So the true cost of taxation is the money governments take, plus the hidden cost of tax-avoiding behavior. Yes, uh, and the point here is not that there should be no taxation, as governments can do good things with revenue they collect. Uh, but you shouldn't ignore the effects on behavior either. It sounds like a difficult compromise. Where do you draw the line between the need for government revenue and the need for producers to be left alone? Well, I can't really tell you. If, if you believe that governments can do some good things, then, then clearly it's not 0% tax. 
Uh, but it's also not 100% tax because that means zero reward for work and risk taking uh, and eventually the whole society breaks down because nobody has an incentive to do anything productive. The most important point though in this discussion is not to discuss tax purely about who gets what as a result of tax policy. Now that might be an advantageous discussion for some groups to have in the short term, especially if they're the ones that are potentially going to get more out of tax changes. Uh, but taxes also have a powerful effect on people's behavior. And for the long-term success of the whole society, uh, incentives and behavior matter more than who gets what in the short term. To summarize, tax collection provides government revenue, and it changes a taxpayer's behavior. Tax collection discourages productive behavior, such as risk-taking and working. When considering tax policy, it's important to think about the behavioral effects as well as the revenue effects. In our next episode, we will evaluate the wider economic effects of government loan schemes. Until then, I'm Jamie Stevenson, and this has been On the Other Hand. Mm -hmm.